me, your violin teacher, Violin Judy, and here is a practice video for our Trans-Siberian Orchestra Christmas Eve Sarajevo. This is a play on Carol with the Bells. So when you play this piece, you're going to definitely want to know how this piece sounds by listening to it first. It's an awesome kind of rocking out uh, Christmas classic carol. And if you've ever gone uh, look, looking at Christmas lights on people's houses, you will see um, that they've synced up music to like a light display on their house. And this is usually one of the songs that people pick because it's just so awesome. I can think about three uh, houses in my town that do the lights display and they all use this song. Okay, so let's get started. Look at our key signature. One sharp, remember sharps are the, it's not a hashtag, it's two straight legs down and the arms are dabbing up and to the right. Uh, and we're doing four, four, four beats in a measure. So what does that one sharp mean for violinists? I mean, it's a key and it means the key is G, but we need to know where to put our fingers. That's what it means for us. So at the beginning of each line, that F sharp tells us where to put all the other fingers. If there's not a second sharp, if there's not a C sharp, then we're going to have low two on A string. And if there's not a third sharp, that means we're going to have what? Low two on E string. I'm losing my voice a little bit. Here's a sip. All right, let's get started. We also have a lot of accidentals in this piece. Accidentals, sharps, flats, and sometimes naturals that don't appear in the key signature. If you haven't checked out the accidental axolotl book yet, definitely uh, check that one out. You will love it. Okay, now at the beginning, we're starting with three on A. This is a pickup note mezzo forte, and then we have two slurred. Three, E, four, four, three, low two, one, E, three. Use four here and get softer. I'm gonna leave my bow and play a big pickup note. It's mezzo forte. Do you see the R, R, T? Slow down. This last note has a fermata over it, so hold it out. And we also got softer on those notes. Now, at measure 11 is where the rock beat starts. Bum, ba, da, da, bum, ba, da, da. One, two, and three. Ready? E, E, four, four. At measure 19, I had the accent, the sideways V on a lot of notes. And notice that most of those notes were the first beat of every measure. That's what we're always going to have when we have pieces in 3 4. It helps people find the beat to hear what you're playing with that uh, emphasis on beat one. E, G, four, four, three. Now, what does the accent mean to a violinist? It means strike harder, but how do we do that? Well, you don't just crunch your bow down like this. That doesn't sound appropriate for this song. It might be good in another piece, but here we're going to use kind of a, a push of air, and we're going to just push our bow just a little bit down, but mostly speed. And the same thing at measure 27. Hold me, hold me, hold me, please. Four measures of rest, then come in measure 35. Ready, go. High two. Now, in this measure, in measure 35, 36, 37, measure 39, if you've learned 30, if you've learned third position, go up to third position there. If you haven't, just play it normally. One, two, three. If you're in third position, the notes are three, two, three, one. Okay, so I'm gonna start 35 and keep going. Use four. Now here's where it gets tricky. Two on the G string, high three on the G string, high four on the G string, one on the D string, normal high two on the D string, three on the D string, A1, A3. Now, those are also slurred notes. So this is the final product. Now what you have to be able to do is get the high three and the high four in the correct place on the G string quickly, but not move your whole hand up. Because when you go back to the D string, those notes are all in the normal place. So don't let your thumb and your whole hand move up. Keep it in the normal place. Then we're going to do it an octave higher on the A string. One, high two, high three, four. One, low two, one, high two, high three, four. And I'm gonna use open E there because I can ring out. And the next part started on four. Four, four. These can crunch a little bit more on these accented notes. One, two, 
one, two, three, one, two, three, rest, rest. Same thing again, but at the end of this line on page two, we have a tie. And there's some a weird word underneath the tie. It says D-E-C-R-E-S. See, what does that mean? And there's a dot. It's an abbreviation for decrescendo, which is like diminuendo, getting softer. That's a 10-beat note there with all those ties. So listen to that. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Then pizzicato. Four, four. Rest. Three, two. Rest. The rest is important. Three, four. Now listen to one when, when I use open E. It kind of rings too much. We want this part to be short and clipped. So use four on all of these. Four, four. Four, four. Three, two. One, four, then an arco, that means with the bow, and it's mezzo piano, but there's a crescendo on the next line. So we're going to slowly get louder for measure 91 to 99. Sorry, we're slowly going to get louder, and that's a crescendo. measures of rest, measure 107, comes back with our accented notes. Three beats, go. Hold me, please. Hold me, please. Two, low two. Four. there's only three beats in a measure, so it's a three beat rest. Oh, don't think it's a four beat rest. I'm gonna keep going. Oh, and then there's, it goes back to four there. Now I was about to talk there and I messed up a little bit. When you get to measure 51, four times, and then we'll play the four, three, four, two, four times. So let's listen to the measure before. How did I do that? Well, at measure 159, no one would be able to practice that the first time at full speed unless you're a pro musician, so don't feel bad. It's just a scale going down. Practice it with separate bows first. Four, three, low two, one, E, three, low two, one, A, three, A, one, low two, three, E, one. Now, if you play it with high twos, it'll sound like joy to the world. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> it'll sound like a different Christmas piece. So definitely low twos there. Now, then you can practice three slurs. To play all nine uh, notes in one boat, you have to be able to play it faster. So you have to start somewhere, practice slow, and then work your way up. And then measure 167, two. These are the top notes I'm playing. Shift up to third position, play one, two. Ignore the two there and just use four. And then we're just going to do a sneaky pinky and stretch our four up there. And this is a tremolo. You know, this is like our electric toothbrush sound effect. Now, if you have not learned third position yet, do the lower notes. Three on D at 167. A, one. And you can use open E and still have fun doing that tremolo. And how many beats is that? It's 12 beats. So even though you're just jamming out playing open E tremolo, you have to be counting. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Or to count to 12. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that is the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Christmas Eve, Sarajevo, 1224, uh, Carol of the Bells kind of remix. I think you're really going to like this one. If you haven't heard this piece, definitely check it out. You will be rocking out. It's the rockinest uh, Christmas piece ever, right? Really epic, and a lot of people will recognize this. It's really fun to do a play-along, play with the recording of this piece. Okay, happy practicing.